Hello and welcome. My name is Ajax Post and you join me here today for the start of something spectacular. Though we've kind of seen it before, to be honest. This is the fourth series of Computer Tycoon, following on from a major update to the game released just as I was concluding Series 3, so that's back in November 2020, Progorian released a significant update to a number of the basic mechanics and systems of the game. And I can't, I can't tell you that I'm familiar with all of them. I've had a quick look and a quick poke around, so I sort of have an idea of how they work. But this could be... A bit of a voyage of discovery for me and perhaps for you too if you've not seen the game before. So let's crack on, let's get into it, let's see what has changed since the last update. In terms of, I'm going to treat this a little bit like a, a first look. Settings, nothing's changed there particularly. Uh, I, I think some changes might have been made in the background to make sure things work properly on various screens, resolutions and so on. But all the settings are basically there. The big first, the first big change though comes here when I click New Game. A map mode selection, yes! Previously, we had a very accurate sort of world map as of around 2000 something. So all the countries were there, even the smallest, tiniest little islands were in the world and you could select them as places to build uh, and market your computers. and. It was entirely randomised, uh, so you could never say, well, the USA is a big country, but it has a tiny population and is very poor. Whereas the Fiji, the island of Fiji, has a huge market and is incredibly wealthy. So it was completely randomised, which gave it that sort of replayability and that sort of, wow, I, I, can't, I don't know anything. I have to sort of work the game and work everything out myself. But now we have this, com this new, as promised, set of map modes. The simplified map is wasn't on the original game plan as it were the roadmap for the game but it evolved uh, in response to sort of player feedback and so on so rather than playing with all the hundreds and hundreds of countries around the world you have a more simplified sort of regional map to play with so for those of you looking for a slightly quicker map a slightly quicker game uh, a little less fiddly poking around the world then that might be for you. But the big news is we have a proper historical map here. And that starts in 1977. And we're promised that Andrash the, Prog the Progorian, the developer of the game, has built into it the changes in political systems and the changes, I'm not sure about borders, we shall see that perhaps if we, if we go through this far enough, if I survive far enough into the future, from 1974 that is of course, so yes, with most of the historical market and border changes, it says it there. Read what it says on the screen, man. Yes, so this, this is going to be quite a challenge. So you can, I think, start in Russia, but you can only sell your computers into countries that follow the communist ideology. Likewise, if you start in a Western democracy, there's no way you're going to be able to sell computers into a communist country in China, Russia, wherever. So you've got all that to play with. At the randomised post-2000 borders is the map that we're familiar with from the earlier versions of the game. So seeing as it's brand new, let's start with a genuinely historical, accurate world map. So here we are. Again, there's not much change here. We have the same set of avatars and we can select our difficulty mode and weather when we die the game is over. There is a increasing chance, uh, chance as you age, your avatar ages through the years, so as you age you, you have a, a slightly higher risk of uh, kicking the bucket and of course there is, the, I'm not sure if it's actually in the game, I've never got that far to be honest, there is a risk of sabotage and so on which uh, could, we could uh, call your career to an end, well your life at least, but you decide here whether that means your career is over, whether you're dead or not. So uh, I'm going to say no, I, I don't know. Uh, we, we will let me, me live on. There's a fair amount of hints and tips through the game, as we will see. Uh, again, that's that's one of the features that uh, the developer is working on to improve. Remember, this is it's been around for a little while now, but it's still very much in, in early access. There's still lots of things to, to play with and improve on the gameplay and so on. Right, so what have we got here? Uh, who shall I be? I will be... I'm going to be my... this. Yeah, I'm going to be the dark purple guy. 
but I'm not going to be you. I'm going to choose... Well, seeing as on this first list, we had no female protagonists. Yep, yeah, I'm going to... Yep, yeah, I'm going to play it for the women. For the female uh, gender or sex or identity. Yeah, that's, that's a complicated issue. Let's not get into that. <laughs> so, uh, no, 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 no. That's you. I'm going to play. This is me. Those are my opponents. There we are. I shall play. Uh, this isn't me. Um, kind of my colours, I suppose. But I've, I've never knowingly worn a dress or high heels. My hair has occasionally been long. Uh, it is now, but that's more a, <laughs> a coronavirus issue than a, a design or a, a choice, fashion choice. Uh, I can't call myself Adam here, obviously, so I shall call myself Alana Slade. It's a good name. Uh, we will be playing in hard mode. Just see if I'm up to the challenge. I was in the previous series, but things are quite different now. So whether I will be up for it is, well, is anybody's guess. Uh, how many of these competitors do I want? Uh, I don't want you because I want to be purple. Uh, so if I choose purple here, there you go, and I don't like the look of you either. Nope, that's fine. Uh, so we've got six competitors of varying hues. Okay, now my company name. I asked in the community tab, I asked, I put a poll up, uh, and also as part of one of my recent monthly giveaways, uh, what sort of name you would like for my computer company. And this was by far the, uh, the the winner of those polls. Computers by Ajax. Recompute was another option, and that got a, a fair number of uh, votes as well. God, and it's quite a nice name too, but Computers by Ajax it is. Our bonus. I like going for logistics because although that's changed a lot in this game, as we will see very soon, uh, buying into countries and sites and stuff is always a big deal. So let's go with that. Research is expensive. But it's not the first thing you need to deal with. I think if we can get through production and marketing and so on, then we should be on a winner. So, yep, I'll go logistics, as I, in fact I did in the previous series. So, Alana Slade, Computers by Ajax, a logistics genius. Let's play Computer Tycoon. Yeah, a blank world map. It starts with a text-based tutorial. Again, uh, the developer is hoping to implement at some point uh, by release a more context sensitive help system, a more sort of guided help tutorial type system. But this is very handy. If you're not familiar with the game, I do recommend going through this. It does give you lots of great hints and tips uh, about the various mechanics and systems in the game and how to get started and so on. So it explains all these things about logistics points, and research points and production points and so on. That, that's all, I will hopefully cover all that as we go through this Let's Play series. But if you're unfamiliar with the game, this is very helpful. So go through at least some of this to get an idea of how to start off. It's very easy to go horribly wrong from the outset if you don't do that. Okay, now the first thing we need to do is find somewhere to... Well, there's two things we need to sort out. We need to work out where we're selling our computers and also where we're building them. And this is the first big change in this latest update to the game. You do not need to access, to, to build a site in a country to be able to market computers in that country. So if we click on say, in fact, this is the tutorials guidance. If we click on Spain here, we can actually mark it into the country of Spain independently of building a site where we have our factory, our research building, our marketing team and so on. So you don't need to do both in this new version of the game. You can market to a country that you do not have a site in. Right, so we need to look at all this information about Spain, which you can see over here in the market details. Uh, France, that's a big country. Oh, it's... Now, Spain is quite rich. Now, that's good. And you notice here... It's, uh, there's no opponent here because nobody else has started up yet. We're all in the same boat, 1974. And the type of market it describes there as an open liberal market. Whereas if we click on the Soviet Union, we don't have any of those same choices because it is a closed communist market, the USSR. Uh, Libya, 
Oh, that's open and liberal. It might have been in 1974. Again, <laughs> I have a reasonable understanding of, of history. Oh, the Democratic Republic of Congo is closed. Saudi Arabia is open. They all appear to be fairly open. Now, can you type of government, liberal or communist? Ah, so at this point, they're either closed and communist or open and liberal. There's no sort of sort of third party, as it were, in here. Greenland. Oh, OK, maybe it's just because it's icy up there. That's why that blue is, is so pale. OK, so that's one way of looking at the world. Um, we, could, we can't... No, we can't go in, into Russia at all. I was wrong when I said we could start in Russia. I think you can at some point. But that's, that's, a, that's another question. I, I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, so Spain. Uh, let's get rid of that. We don't want that display on there. Whoop, no, we'll take you. There we are. Nice white screen. Uh, Spain. That's quite good. Let's... What I want to do first... We will mark it to Spain, so let's do that. Now, this is the, the second of the big updates, is the way access to a market has changed. Previously, when you bought uh, marketing rights into a country, you could sell through the entire country, you had access to the whole of that market, um, and it was essentially free of charge. Now what happens is to sell into a country, you assign logistics points. Now, these are essentially, I think, your distribution network, your own distribution network, as opposed to using resellers. Uh, so this is what this is doing here. So by putting more logistics points into a country, you can see here the reseller cut is being reduced. Yeah. And that's because you're using less resellers to sell your kit than you were with the fewer logistics points. There's also, I mean, this there's all sorts of costs involved in this as well. So, we'll actually, we'll come to that in a moment because it starts getting a little bit more complicated. There's also now a sales tax on uh, these markets. Now, does this help? Does this button here, if I click off of that, does this tell me? Uh, no, it doesn't. There's another page which does also tell you about the sales tax. In fact, the tutorial does mention the sales tax, so you can work it out there if you wanted to. Uh, the sales tax... It, I'm not sure if that changes over time, but you do need to bear that in mind because each country has different sales tax levels. So Turkey, so actually it tells you there, you don't need to click into it. Oh, that's good. A 13% sales tax, but 11% reseller cut. Now, the notice here also, if I click on that to hold it in place, the estimated monthly growth of Algeria is 51,000. In Spain, it's 20,000. Ah. I'm not quite sure what that refers to. Does does this tell me? Uh, if you keep them out? No, no, that doesn't tell me. Uh, maybe it... No, I don't think there's anywhere else that uh, tells me that. Uh, no. <laughs> so is that a growth in population? It must be, I suppose. That's the only thing it could be. Uh, Greenland have left the estimated growth is less than a thousand. Yeah, it probably is a population growth thing, isn't it? So again, if you're going for a big market, ooh, Algeria could catch up with Spain. Right, um, I need to click on something. I need to make a decision. So we're going to go. We're going to sell into Spain because they're rich, so they will be prepared to pay more for my computers. Okay. Now I don't have any logistics points at this. This, this point in time because I've not built a site, I haven't built a logistics department or anything like that so I can although I can assign logistics points if I assign more than I have which I will do here my logistics points here up in the top right will go into the negative and that will incur additional costs I believe in addition to the reseller cut so I need to assign one resale point or one logistics point rather to move into Spain. I don't like that sales tax. Actually, no, let's not do that. Let's go here to the market list. Okay, now we can do it from here. The, 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 the benefit of doing the market list is you can compare countries more easily and sort them into preferences order. Uh, so I take out the closed market. So those are the countries I can't sell to. 
uh, I click off market and site because I don't have any of those anyway at the moment. But that would this by leaving it as just unused, that just shows me the countries I don't have any presence in at all. And I want I did I like somewhere rich or filthy rich. Okay, and let's sort it. I love this about the game. These most of the tables can be sorted. Uh, so if I click on reseller, so this is in order of reseller cut. Yeah, so here you see the reseller cut is only 8% and the sales tax, this column here, is only 13%. That's much better. But they are much smaller countries. Uh, as you can see here, this is the population. Germany is big country. That's actually quite good. But will I be able to supply them with enough computers from my small factories that I'll have to start with? Ooh, Japan, that's good. That's good. And notice here, yeah, the maximum logistics, logistics points is based on the size of the country. So you'll need to use 22 logistics points to, to distribute your computers yourself to the whole country. Uh, France, well, that's a very high taxation rate. I'm thinking actually, uh, Spain, Spain might be good actually. Uh, can I move you out of the way? Well, I can't move this window. That's fair enough. <laughs> so, Spain. Okay, yeah, we will start with Spain. So, we'll market to Spain with one logistics point. There we go. Okay, now we need somewhere to build a factory. Now, factories are cheaper in poorer countries. So, let's go back to our market list. And we will search for poor or poverty rated countries. Uh, uh, oh, actually, Sri Lanka is quite good here. That's quite a big population. And uh, ooh, and Peru is good as well, actually. Yes, I like the idea of Peru. Now, are we going to build a site or are we going to market to this country? Let's build a site in Peru. There you go. And it's going to cost us one million of our... Oh, I've got 25 million in this game to start with. Oh. I am on hard mode, aren't I? Maybe the rules have changed. <laughs> Let's... Uh, am I clicking yes on that? Uh, I am allowed to go to Peru, aren't I? Did, what, what happened there? Was I... Uh, have I gone to Peru? Say yes. Oh, not quite sure why that, that didn't work on the on the mist on the list site. Okay, so and um, we're going here because building a factory because they're a poverty rated country gives me a Mac a great bonus, a reduction in the cost of a factory uh, the the cost of the factories. So we'll upgrade you, and we could also do with the logistics office here as well. That'll give me two logistics points. That's good. Okay, so we'll build you as well. Right, so that's setting up where we are in the world. And I'm not going to let them... I don't want to exit the game. I'm not going to build them yet because I want to set up our first computer to begin with. The other little thing here on the changes to the game, uh, we have these little indicators in the top. If I get rid of that, there you go. Uh, in the top left here, little red indicators of issues that you have. If you're losing money, or if you don't have enough production capacity, or if we don't have enough logistics points. So as it says here, we will be paying a penalty because we don't have enough logistics points to sell all our computers into Spain, which is the only place we're selling them into at the moment. Actually, we could sell them into Peru. That's quite a nice market could do that. Let's leave that for the moment. Let's see what computers we can build. <laughs> okay. Right. Do we have any hardware yet? I don't believe we do. So if we create a new computer, it's a home computer. Nope, we need to create our hardware first, of course. So this is here. And we need to create a new CPU. And we're going to select all this technology. And the base clock frequency, this will increase the cost of the uh, of the unit, of the CPU. And the PP here is how much 
power, how much manufacturing capacity it takes effectively to create this CPU per unit. And the upfront, upfront cost is how much it costs us to prototype this, basically, if you want to think of it in that way. Um, now, increasing the base clock gives you more performance. Uh, here, does it give you anything else? No, just performance. But a little improvement in performance, or in fact, any of these slider attributes here that we have, will give you a significant increase in the production cost of these units. So, it's a... It's a delicate balancing act to get better a kit out from your com opponents uh, opposed to the cost you have in manufacturing them so yeah we'll call it that and we will call this one uh, yeah we'll, we'll call it Ajax AJ CPU 01 because it is my first okay so that's our CPU and our new motherboard. Just DIN connectors on this. We remember we're in 1974 still. Uh, and we'll increase the quality of it and the features a little bit. Let's go 2%. Again, what I'd love to have on here is a way of typing those numbers in because my mouse control is a little bit slack at times <laughs> or inaccurate so mb01 i wonder if i'll be able to remember my my standardized naming system uh, beyond this first build I, who knows so that's you and we need to create a power supply take you okay we'll bump the quality up a little bit What should we call this? Power supply PS. Yeah, it's good a name as any. 01. Right, so I'll go through creating the remaining bits of hardware we need for our computer, and then we'll come back and put them all together into the most fantastic new computer design. Okay, so we now have all the components I need for my computer. So we'll come out of there and we will go into building our first computer. Our computer number one. I don't like the name of that. So this is going to be, I cut, let's say, um, hope it's a home computer and it's 1974 and it's the first one of that year, uh, which is, yeah, my naming system. I've always used that. No accessories so far to go on there. Our memory, if we double click that, goes in there, double click that. Ooh, notice we've now got this X button here. Again, the way you build computers and so on has changed a bit, as hopefully we'll get to see in the upcoming episodes. There's no removable media, no GPU cards, a power supply. We'll take you, storage, on the Winchester disc, our motherboard, our display. We've only got blinking lights at the moment, and our very basic operating system. And there we are, that's our final value, so we'll see how those compare to our comp opponents shortly. And this is how much it will cost to build or prototype and test this. We need to find a price for it. We'll have to work that out. Now again, this has changed somewhat. We have lots of new and interesting tabs across the top of the, uh, of the computer design page here. We've got pricing. So here we can compare ourselves with all our opponents. Obviously, this I haven't actually started the game yet. <laughs> Nobody's built anything yet, so it's difficult to tell, uh, actually. Uh, if we go back to design, it doesn't give me the average cost yet. It might do when I start, actually, because I haven't built a factory yet, so it doesn't know how much it's going to cost. That's right. Now, this is a major new change. Marketing is one of the other things which has gone through a complete overhaul and I suspect there's more changes to go through as well. So whenever you sell your computers, you always pay marketing costs. You can choose how much marketing you want to spend, but uh, you always have to pay something. And there are ongoing to this limitations to the number of campaigns you can run and the number of computers you can sell of the same design like home computers or personal computers or tablets or whatever and we'll get into that obviously as we release more computers further down the line the release has not been released yet there are no reviews from any of these fabulous magazines and we don't have any customers yet 
So, what we need to do is get the game running, build our factory. We're dominating Spain. We've, that's the only country we're selling into at the moment. We are, as you can see, making a loss. And we need logistics points. So let's go to our site. Let's go to Peru. And we can see our site slowly building our little factory. And our logistics unit here. They'll pop up very, very soon. And how much capacity will we have in our factory at full cost if we are finding we have more capacity in our factories than we have demand we can reduce the budget so we can reduce capacity that way okay and yeah our logistics upgrade and our factory upgrade is done as it tells us in the notepad down in the bottom left we now have a positive LP point there so we're not getting a penalty for that so we need to do let's go back to our computer system and the average cost is 693 so how much of a margin do we want to put on that so if we sell that for 1500 okay now here we see the profit per unit and also the average budget of each type of customer in terms of their wealth now at the moment we're only selling it to Spain which is a rich country so we could actually sell this for, let's say, two and a half thousand. Yeah. And the profit per unit would be nearly two grand if we sell all of them to the Spaniards. OK, where else can we sell them to? Let's see if we can open up another market before we actually get the game running and selling. Uh, I'd like actually a filthy rich country. To sell into and we haven't got that many of them in terms of reseller cut uh, the UAE Kuwait which I don't need to sell them here do I or do, mm. actually Switzerland looks no there's a big sales tax on in Switzerland Kuwait that's not that many people do you know what I think Let's see, my usual trick is to, in the old game, was to cover both bases, rich and poor. So, yeah, let's build, let's market rather, into Peru uh, as well, which is our poor country where we built our factory. So we need to go uh, again here. So this is our poor country, uh, which we've got a site on. There you go. Oops, I didn't mean to double click that. I didn't mean to click that rather. So if we click that there, logistics. Let's put one point in there. And okay, good. That's that done. Now what we'll also do is build. Let's go back to the world map. Get the game running. We'll actually build a research lab in Spain. Why can I not click on Spain? There's Spain. Let's uh, build a site in Spain. That'll cost us 1.3 million, which is good. But I want a research lab here because research labs are cheaper in richer countries. So we will build you, but we're not going to fully budget. We're not going to fully fund that. We don't have the money yet to do that. So if we take that right down to say, 20%. How's our computer doing? Uh, we haven't sold any yet. Is it still going through testing? Now this is some, again, let's pause this for a second. This is something else that, that's happened, is they've uh, re removed the test and polish button here, where you could give your prototyping people your factory 30 days to polish the computer before releasing it to the market. I think that's done automatically now. Uh, how do you know it's being sold? Uh, you don't really. Uh, has it been? Oh, here it is. Test. Darn. Right, let's test Your new test computer it. model went into the testing phase. Right. Good. Okay, I should have spotted that earlier. 
because I now have a factory which is doing nothing and I'm paying for it. So let's take Your building upgrade has completed. Our factory down. Your to research queue is empty. Nothing there. Right, let's pause this for a second while I do a little bit more thinking because <laughs> we're losing vast amounts of money. So we'll take that out. Let's go to Spain. And how much is the research lab costing us? Let's take that right down to 10%. And let's start some research. If you've not seen the game before, this this is impressive. This is the technology, the research tree. Yeah, that that's all. It goes through so many different uh, eras and ages of computing, design, and technology, and all the all the key components: the MCA buses, VGA, LCDs, uh, tuners for video and sound as well as power supply, fan technology, and cooling and so on, it's all in here. Again, this has been revised in this latest update, uh, again released in November 2020. It's the first time I've actually played with it properly. Uh, so we've now got more color coding on here, so you can see which technologies are tied into particular computing eras or generations. Uh, we certainly haven't got to personal computers yet, so we're only looking at home computer technology. So if I click that, that just highlights all those that are relevant to home computers. But uh, let's see, what's the cheapest one to research? I like to do it this way. So research points, let's sort it by you. Ooh, the S100 bus or a printer or a keyboard or a tape drive. Uh, let's do the S100 bus, I think, to start with, and then we'll research the printer. A nice little accessory so you can print out those lovely ASCII art pages. Right, let's get the game moving on again. And here we can. Hang on, someone else has moved into Spain. Brutal data. You. Oh, I hate you already. Struth, where's my computer? Uh, it's not quite polished yet. Oh. Okay. We will wait for it. Now, if I compare, can I compare this to my opponents? Yeah, I'm good for prestige and features and ease of use. Uh, is the red guy brutal data? Yeah, uh, you don't appear to be winning on any of these criteria. So, okay, I should hopefully be able to beat you in Spain. Ah, you're so, you're so, oh, you're expensive. So I can compete on price, hopefully. Or does that mean I can actually make mine pricier? But you see here, their performance is that much better than mine. And they're compa in fact, uh, most everything, apart from features, prestige, and ease of use, <laughs> where I do beat them. Oh, I'm, and quality. Overall, my quality is better than theirs. So I could Your charge new a computer model is polished. I could charge a premium for mine then, couldn't I? Do I have reviews for it yet? Oh wait, it has to be released first. Okay, release. Go for it. Okay. And the reviews. Wow! Everyone loves it. Uh I've reached 54% of my estimated market. <laughs> my market at the top here is 166,000 demand production points so that oh that is way more way more than I can produce in my little factory uh, where, where's my factory there it is so let's fully budge let's fully fund the, the factory and I'm nowhere near meeting that demand so what I could do of course is increase the price of my unit and let's make it uh, 3,500 That is splendid. Uh, uh, get the game going again. Uh, marketing, release. Okay, so I am selling quite a few. Ooh, hang on, what's going on here? I've just noticed this percentage. You have one or more products without any discounts per economy status. That's right, because I am only selling, I think, into Spain. Ooh, and Peru. Well, you're a poverty country, you can't afford it. Ooh, eck. But then again, I can't produce enough of them, so... 
Oh dear. Right. Uh, so pricing. I need to change that. They can't afford it because their average budget is a thousand. So if I price this at fifteen. Uh, no, the discount rather is. Ooh, 65%? Nope. 50%. Yeah, that, that, make it 55%. Nope, that's too cheap. That's better. 52%. Okay. Right, so does that mean... Yes, that percent sign is gone, so... Well, that's a good warning, actually. Yep, that's good. But I'm still nowhere near meeting demand. But I'm making a lot of money, which is excellent. And that's quite a good point, I think, I wish to end this very first episode of Series 4 of Computer Tycoon. With me making money. Uh, okay, now, there's a lot more to see in this. Uh, oh, they've changed, oh, he's changed all this as well. Sales, share. Well, I'm doing quite well. Yes, of the global computer market. Excellent. Preferences. Uh, we will explore these in more detail. I'm selling most to Spain, obviously, because they can afford it. <laughs> so, yeah, well, just... Oh, you can, ah, this is nice. Who is boss this month? Not me. Date or systems. Uh, yeah, you're the orange guy. Oh, well. Oh, that's nice. Percentage... Oh, I like this. I like this. Fan distribution. <laughs> my, my best fans are in Spain, obviously. Right, there is so much more to see in this latest version of Computer Tycoon, and hopefully you'll join me to explore all of those new, funky new features, those exciting and demanding new features of this game. So thank you so much for joining me today. Hope you've enjoyed this very first episode of Series 4 of Computer Tycoon. If you have, it'd be great to hear from you. A little bit of a like would be lovely. Even better though, if you've got any thoughts... Uh, any suggestions, hints and tips for this game? Because as I said, it's been out. this update has been out for a few months now and I've not really had a detailed look at it. So if you're more familiar with it, please don't hesitate to, to clue me in on some hints and tips so I can hopefully make a success of this, uh, this new company of mine. Anyway, yeah, just drop a note into the comments box below. That would be awesome. And of course, if you've not already subscribed to the channel, you could do that now. And that way you'll know when I upload another one of these or any of my other Let's Play series. But from me, Ajax Post, here, once again, in Computer Tycoon. Until the next time, bye-bye for now.